All right, everyone, my name is Rachel Pressler. I am the current reigning Mrs. Colorado 2019, and I'm going to interview a current contestant for the Mrs. Wyoming America pageant happening this July 11th in downtown Denver. So Ashley, I'm so excited to really pick your brain, get to know you and hear about your story. And I can't wait for our audience to get to know you a little bit better. So tell me, what is your name and where are you from and what do you represent? So I am Ashley Prue. I am Mrs. Cheyenne in Wyoming. Um, I currently live in actual Cheyenne, Wyoming. <laughs> um, I'm originally from Anaheim, California. So this is my second home away from home. Um, I've been here for over 11 years and I love this environment and I love this place. I am active duty military. So that kind of says a little bit about me as a whole. In addition, I'm a mom of four crazy school age kids that right now during this time, I'm teacher too. So that's a new adventure for me as a, really. Um, let's see, I've been married for five years to my husband, Shane. In addition to our four crazy little kids, we have two bird kids. We have a little cat and a dog. Um, we kind of have this like perfect little family. Um, we have two boys, two girls, and then we have a boy and a girl pet. So we have this perfect evenness. Um, I am definitely an OCD person when it comes to that. So even is good. <laughs> yeah, I, I love that. And, and being someone that is also active duty in the military, thank you so much for your service. and everything that you do. And I know along this journey, you have to be resilient and you have to be balanced, right? Raising a family and then and then um, moving place to place. I'm gonna make sure I'm not using any military acronyms here. Right. I was about to say PPS, <laughs> like what, what does that mean? So, so Ashley, tell me, um, this is not your second time or this is not your first time competing, correct? It is not. This will be year number three. Wow. So, um, I, I started, I did a 2018 as a test shot after I had my youngest as a, I want to put myself out there as much as I can put myself out there. And I learned a lot about me and I learned a lot about the pageant as a whole, the sisterhood, like what was really needed. And I think that's the first year you and I met. And then I, yeah, 18, because. And then I competed the last year and I learned even more about myself last year than mm -hmm. I did the first year. I walked in with a totally different mind frame yes last year and I was like, oh, we'll we'll do this. We'll do this. I I learned a lot the first year and I learned even more. And now walking into this year, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna do me. I'm gonna be what. I am and who I am and represent the crazy active duty moms of the world and just show who I am. That's so beautiful. And yes, you're right. 2018. <laughs> I almost like thought like, what year is this? It's 2020. I know. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. So you and I competed for the first time in 2018 and I can't believe that was two years ago. So so tell me, before you competed, you know, what was going through your mind? You know, what really made you make that first step in, in competing in 2018? Um, so I had competed a few years um, when I was younger and then into high school. And I did the whole high school cheerleading thing. I did the choir thing. I did after high school, the college thing. And I thought I found my career route when I was 18 years old and it didn't really pan. So I joined the military and I had always missed that girly side of me per se. And, um, so I lived overseas for four years. I got to live in England, which is one of the great advantages of being in the military. Um, and then when we got stationed here, I made friends with some girls who their daughters were doing pageants and I got my oldest into pageants and I was like I remember these days I remember like the excitement the the adrenaline and a new pageant system actually came to Wyoming and one of my really good friends competed in the inaugural year for it and um 
she kind of convinced me to get back out there. And I was like, uh, I don't think I remember any part of this world, even though I'm so girly naturally. But um, I, I did it and I got back up on the stage and I felt I did really good. But every time you walk on that stage, you find out something new about yourself, about the environment, about the people that you're with, the people who run the organizations. And I literally fell in love with just that feeling of sense of being a part of a group. Not to mention, I mean, I'm a part of a huge team every day, but just that small entity of people that care about the same stuff that you do. And some people look at it and they're like, oh, you just wear pretty makeup and really big dresses and too high of heels. And I'm like, no, it's so much more than that. It's that sisterhood, it's that bond that a lot of people miss. And I really, I didn't realize how much I really did miss that world. And then when I heard about the Mrs. Wyoming pageant, I was like, oh yeah, let's take this to the next level. I'm already half out of my comfort zone. Let's get the rest of it out. And the hardest part was putting on a bathing suit after having a baby. <laughs> That's incredible. And I just love how you said it. It's like, it's, it's way more than just the crown and the makeup and the big fancy poofy dresses. It's about being who you are. And also it's that big sisterhood that, you know, you and I both understand with the military, there's not many women. And it's so, it's hard to find that community. And I just love how you shared that. Like, this is a sisterhood. Um, it's way beyond the, just the looks, the, the wearing, the things, the jewelry. Um, right. and I love that. I love that. So along this journey, um, with, with competing a couple times, what life lesson would you like to share with everyone? Just be you. I, walking in, in 2018, I thought that everything I learned in the past was, it's a job interview, like, be professional, you, you present yourself in the way that they want you, and really, it's, you need to present yourself the way that you want others to see you, you need to just have fun, if you mess up on your words, laugh about it, like, make Make yourself, make the judges, make your fellow contestants, make them feel like you love them as much as you love yourself. And all you want to do is just bring whatever energy and feelings and passion you have to this world and to this community and whomever you're representing. Like, I, I still want to make sure that people understand my quirky personality and how girly I am is it's okay to be girly. It's okay to be in the military. I'm also a really big bookworm. I'm working on my master's and I'm going to get my PhD right after my master's. And I love being nerdy and talking about that kind of stuff. And it's okay. People want to know you for who you are, not for what you think they want you to be. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. <laughs> That's amazing. Thank you for sharing all of that. And thank you for being so authentic here. And I'm sure our audience is really loving that, how, you know, you are someone that didn't grow up doing pageants and then someone reached out to you and you're like, oh, I don't know. But then there's a part of you that like, you know, wanted to, to compete. And I, I'm so proud of you for making that step. And so sharing your story really helps those around you who are thinking about competing and just seeing you as an authentic version of you. I'm like, hey, look at me. I'm active duty military. I'm, I'm chasing my master's, hopefully PhD. I'm a mom. I've got kids. I got fur babies. Like life is crazy, but this, this is something that is important to me because I see the value behind it. So that is so beautiful. So let's say you um, are, are being crowned in July. What would your reign look like? Obviously, the military has a huge, huge part in it. Um, Cheyenne is a very small community. Like, contrary to popular belief, there's only 500,000 people in the state of Wyoming as a whole. And people don't realize, like, our entire state isn't even considered a city. Like, we have towns. We have a town of one person in the middle of nowhere. But it's a town because it has one person. <laughs> and it's really hard to get people to understand this type of life like yes I didn't grow up here and it was a huge adjustment coming from California where Disneyland was my backyard and I had things to do 24 7 
and I came to a place where going out and fishing, going out and hunting, letting my kids literally run amok in my backyard, in my front yard, in my neighborhood, and not worrying about them, like, it's a totally different sense of reality. And um, as I think about wanting to incorporate, obviously, my military side, and I'm so proud to be a part of the Wyoming Air National Guard, which I'm an active duty member of, it's still a very tiny, tiny world. Only 1% of Americans in the entire continental United States join the military. Like, it's, it's a really big thing. And I want to make sure that people understand you don't have to commit your life. You have to commit yourself. And yes, it's a family responsibility. It's a personal responsibility. But if somebody like me, who's crazy and girly and loves school and loves her family and does all of this stuff can do all of this, I want to bring that to light. It's not, it's, it's not difficult. It's just making sure that your priorities and bringing everything to light is really where I want to go with it. Well, that's very mm -hmm. hard to share. Thank you so much for sharing that. It's incredible. So what, <laughs> from this journey, you know, what, what have you learned about yourself in preparation of the pageant? Um, I learned that everything I knew before going into these last two years and now this third year, I threw it out the window. I, I thinking that just being a professional person, thinking about just being the person people want me to be was enough. And it's not. I realized that I need to be me for me. And I need to be me for everybody else because not everybody has an Ashley like me. Not everybody has an amazing Rachel like you. Um, we're all unique and we all bring a different environment, a different way of life, a different perspective. And being different is not bad. It's the best thing ever because there's no way the world can handle more of me. So I know just being me is going to be enough for everybody, including myself. That's very beautiful. Yeah. I, I, I love how you shared that, like just true realness and authenticity goes miles beyond just trying to be something that you're not comparing yourself to others. And so mm -hmm. I'm so glad you, you mentioned that and that you're going to bring that to the table in July that, Hey, I'm just going to be me. And I'm not going to apologize for it. I'm just going to go full on and just take my experience. And like, I love how you just said it. Like my biggest life lesson is I just needed to be me, which is mm -hmm. incredible. Right. And some people discover it very early in life, some people later. And that's what I love about this pageant is you get to learn things about yourself. You never knew about. So exactly. actually exactly. last questions, um, <laughs> last question I could talk about everything with all this authenticity with you all day, but what is one thing that you want to share with all of us that you haven't talked about yet? Um, so I have this weird, crazy motto. It's called, I am working to retire to work. And I know that sounds like the most randomest thing in the world because everyone's like, well, you have your career and you retire and then you're retired. But, and I'm sure you well, completely understand this. Aside from me being a huge bookworm and love going to school and working on my master's and going to get my PhD and going to have another half of my life in 10 years, I truly, truly love working. And I love taking advantage of the opportunities that I have in life. And the military has given me that and they are paying for most of my degrees. So I might as well take advantage of that. And I'm working now. So I can retire, so I have a nice small little nest egg, and then I can go and do anything else I want in the entire world. I could be a Walmart grader, I can go work at Lowe's, I can go sit and be an airline stewardess, I can be a secretary at my kids' school. Um, I'm not going to do any of that, but um, I'm actually going to be a professor, a college professor. I have a huge background and I am, by trait of a cop in the easiest sense of form is I love criminal justice. I love that aspect of finding out the differentiation between why people become who they are because of their communities. So um, just doing that research and sitting and kind of just watching the environment around me. 
And I'm super excited that I get to do that, which is a huge thing for me because sometimes you don't get to choose your careers. They, they choose you. And I'm really blessed to be able to choose the careers. And I say careers plurally because I get to have multiple that, of them and I'm okay with it. Like it's super exciting for me to see what my future holds. That is so, so powerful, Ashley. Thank you so much for letting us pick your brain, get to know you on a deeper level. And thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to let us really get to know you. And I am so excited for you to see what you're bringing in July this year. And again, thank you so much for bringing your authenticity on here. And hopefully if there's someone watching who is like on the very edge of, oh, I don't know if I should compete or not, just seeing you as an example of, you're so ambitious with education, with your career, with being a mom, a wife. And again, thank you so much for your service and everything that you do. Thank you so much. Absolutely. All right. Bye, girl. Bye.